Hi, welcome to Mission Driven Monday. My name is Chantel Adams and I am here with my friend Roxanne Russell. Uh, Roxanne and I actually attended high school together and she was one of those people that I was like, oh my gosh, this is the smartest person I've ever met in my life. Um, she just was so far beyond what anything I was ever capable of doing. And I thought she was also one of the bravest people I ever met in my life. Um, just a fun fact, she worked in a parking deck in downtown Atlanta when we were in high school. And I know for a fact that she even skipped school and went to lunch sometimes off campus, um, <laughs> which I would have never done because I was just too much of a goody two shoes back then. Actually, I probably still am. <laughs> but um, anyway, it's really been fun to see everything that Roxanne has accomplished since then. She has a PhD and she's the director of digital learning at Emory University's Candler School of Theology. Uh, she also is the brains behind an organization that she founded called Full Tilt Ahead. And I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about that. But one of the things that she does there is that she teaches kids how to read and how to love reading, which, as you all know, is a personal passion of mine. So it's my pleasure to introduce Roxanne today. Roxanne, thank you for being here. Thank you, Chantel. It's, it's so exciting to be here with you and to see what you have built with your uh, Mission Driven Monday initiative yeah. and all of the other things you're into. <laughs> Well, yeah, I like to do a lot of different things. I'm, uh, what is it where you're like master of none, but you do a lot. Who is a master of anything? Well, a few people. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, every Monday we ask the same three questions and I love asking these questions to women that I know from all over the country and all kinds of different life stages. And so we're just going to start right now. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. <laughs> Um, Roxanne, I want you to tell me about something that you are really proud of accomplishing. So I knew what question was coming and I had a hard time deciding between two things because when I thought, what am I proud of? I thought, what am I most grateful for? Mm -hmm. So I'm going to briefly mention the one thing that I'm actually most grateful for and then answer the second thing to go into more of an accomplished okay. thing. The thing I'm most grateful for is having had the opportunity to be from lower Alabama and immerse into my husband's family and because they're from South India. And so that's actually the thing in my life that I'm both really grateful for and I'm actually kind of proud of because I had to test myself and <laughs> I feel uncomfortable in spaces until now. I'm just completely a member of that family. So much of the credit for that goes to them. But that's that was an amazing part of my life. It has shaped who I am in many ways and uh, changed me from when we knew each other uh, mm -hmm. to now. So I wanted to at least put that in there because it's been such a, a, a big factor in uh, my growth. Yeah. But my other proudest accomplishment has been sort of turning that same love that you and I share for reading um, being an academic bookworm into a uh, web-based tool <laughs> to help children read, like you said. So it has been from shifting to being an academic bookworm type to being an inventor and a businesswoman in order to bring this mission I have for getting more children interested in reading, getting teenagers away from screens in just mm -hmm. interacting in video, but to get into screens to read um, and help them from being bored, distracted readers to being engaged, critical readers. So that's been my biggest accomplishment um, to explain a little bit about it. I uh, started on this project while I was working on my PhD at Georgia State. I had a teacher friend who was a high school literature teacher and he made his students read for close to an hour every week while sitting in his class. And it's called Independent Sustained Silent Reading. And he said the biggest problem was really just for them to sit still that long, for them to sit and read, to just be able to have the focus. So, and that's a gap that we haven't been filling. You know, we, we spend a lot of money on um, in education and we spend a lot of time on the reading strategies, which are absolutely important. But there has been less time spent on a helping students adapt from this digital world they're in to read black and white text on the page. And so we tried something out. It was a method I came up with using PowerPoint presentations at the time, um, and it worked. We, uh, we did a, a full uh, year long 
rigorous study in high school with uh, several different classes and the students using the reading modules that I had created had twice the gains in reading motivation wow. um, and reading comprehension, which is really unheard of, those kinds mm -hmm. of uh, significant difference results. And I thought, this is amazing, this is going places. But it turned out that all the time I spent making those PowerPoint presentations is not something somebody's gonna sit down and do every day, <laughs> especially a busy teacher. So then it took us years to overcome that. And along the way, I couldn't give up the dream. I just never could get up, give it up because I watched it work with these students. With excellent co colleagues, I uh, invented uh, Read Ahead. And it's an AI tool that transforms any digital text into a guided reading activity in seconds. Wow. So our tagline is it turns screen time into reading time. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I mean, what I love most is that you saw a problem and you were like, I got to figure out how to fix this. And like you said, you know, you had these PowerPoint presentations and you were like, okay, I know a teacher can't do this. And I think so many people have a dream and then they give up on it because they, um, they don't know how to move forward with it. But you were like, okay, this is just a little roadblock. We got to figure it out because it's important. And I, you know, I have four kids and none of them share the love of reading like I have. And I want that for them so much. And to see that you've created something that will, I, I think one of the biggest roadblocks is, especially if they didn't learn how to read early and it was hard for them to learn how to read, um, they end up not liking it. And then they go to school and like you said, they're made to read certain things. I mean, how many books did we read in high school that we were like, oh, I hate this book. Why do I have to read it? Um, when if they could only read things that they loved and they were good at it, it might make a huge difference. And that's really one of our goals for Read Ahead. And you, you pinpointed why I'm proud of this accomplishment, because I know that that's one of the, you know, what, what we're going to focus on here today, because I'm going to get to have this moment to be proud. Yes. And that, I am proud of sustaining my attention on this problem for over 10 years and failing again and again in different mm -hmm. ways and taking paths that went nowhere after I'd put tons of hours and time into them. And then not just going, okay, fine, it didn't work. Going, okay, that didn't work. Yeah. Let's try this. And I would come all the way back to the beginning and I would start over again. And I mean, it. I am proud of that because uh, early on in life, a lot of things had come easy to me. And I had not had to push myself like that or push through um, mm -hmm. hard work and dedication to an idea that I, this works. Like, let's see this, let's see this through because it's going to help. Uh, teenagers read yeah. and I mean, frankly I just think that reading is such a foundation for being a good critical member of our society that I, I want to be surrounded by good readers when I'm older and, and then these folks are in charge well and reading is related to so many other things I mean you really can't be a good writer unless you're a good reader and also I mean you and I know this that reading just helps us be more empathetic in general and just to understand about people which, you know, emotional intelligence is just one of those things that's getting a lot of press time lately. I mean, it's just a skill that you have to have to be successful in the world. And it all goes back to reading. I just think that it's so, so important. So much a part of it. So much. Yeah. Well, good. I love that, Roxanne. I learned a lot of lessons the hard way. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I mean, I, uh, I worked with people that I really trusted that let me down in big ways. Mm -hmm. I uh, let myself down in big ways. I learned some uncomfortable truths about myself <laughs> and about the world, you know, like as mm -hmm. I've gone through this process, it's been amazing to find out that along the way of, I want to bring this up too, right. of pushing for this dream of read ahead. We formed a team um, of design thinkers, of creators, and all of a sudden we realized we had an academic design studio. Mm -hmm. And so when you introduced me, you introduced me as the brains of full tilt ahead because that's the academic design studio that we put together while we were working on this read ahead dream. We suddenly had a thriving online learning and e-learning services business emerge just from the energy of working with people who were willing to try to solve problems, who right. had the skill sets to work on these educational technology type problems. And honestly, Full Tilt Ahead has 
earned us way more. <laughs> it's had more what you would call business success. Right. Than Rita Head has. It has funded every bit of the development that we've done for Rita Head has been what we've earned through the full tilt head services business. So there was a lot of reward for the hard work. There was a lot of reward for the failing in the end because we kept taking everything as a lesson, even if we had to learn it the hard way, because I did learn so many things the hard way. It should have known better. <laughs> Cliches were out there that I should have warranted, but yeah. no, we had to do it and we had to learn it. <laughs> I feel like we need to have another conversation about that because I like, honestly, I feel like I'm going to have to call you and we're going to have to sit down <laughs> because I love to learn from people who have, learned something about starting businesses um, because there's so much to share. Like, I hope you've written all of that down. I mean, every time that you overcame one of those stumbling blocks, that, that, that was a proud achievement in itself. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's amazing. And don't you think it's funny, like to look back and think like when you were in middle school, when you were in high school and somebody asked you like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I mean, the e the internet didn't even exist. I mean, we didn't even know about it, and That's so you right. couldn't even say that. My whole life, this is my whole world. Yeah, yeah, it's incredible. Well, now that you're in it, and I mean, you have a huge resume, but when you think about this season that you're in right now, what what are you learning? I think patience. Um, I've had to learn to trust slow progress because um, our success with Full Tilt Ahead was almost immediate and has continued to thrive. Mm -hmm. But Read Ahead has been much slower. Um, you know, we had to build a product. We bootstrapped, we bootstrapped every dime we put into it. And, um, and so we'll build a little and then wait a lot. So right. patience has been important. And it has made me sort of draw a, a, a strong line in the sand against this narrative that's out there about business models of success there's just this one narrative and that is growth fast growth and that's not the case you know like yeah I've, I've had to remind myself i've had to have discernment about what we're doing and that it is working even if it's working slowly so mm -hmm. that's that is what i'm learning right now you know um you're not supposed to even care about the product that you're offering if you jump into the entrepreneurial world of what it means to be a business person. And I can't do that. I care very deeply <laughs> about creating worthwhile, effective learning experiences for our children who are, are not like we were in middle school. They live in a digital world. Right. And that we need to be thinking about them for that. No, I, th I think that's good. I think that's good. And um, you're not the first woman that I've interviewed that said that she's learning patience right now, because I think it's something that we all kind of <laughs> need to learn. And, you know, they always say, like, don't pray for patience, because if you pray for patience, like, everything in your life is going to fall apart, and you're going like, to really need the patience. Um, you only get <laughs> it by... I didn't know I wasn't supposed to. <laughs> you only get it by really practicing. But it's such an important lesson, I feel like, because like you said, um, there, in the entrepreneur world, it is, about, it is about growth and about success and all of these kinds of things, but there's, there's, there's no shame in slow growth when you're doing it correctly. And like you said, like we bootstrapped every dime and being able to make it profitable. I mean, that's awesome. That's great. So I'm glad you said that. Glad yeah. you said that. Thank you. Okay. Um, so when you look to the future and you think kind of about your aspirational self, the future Roxanne, what is the legacy that you want to leave? Well, I think you could guess it because I have been so laser focused on this one particular thing for 10 years. Mm -hmm. and, you know, like I would really love to be known for having played a role in helping our newest generation become good readers in the midst of all of this digital distraction in their lives. I would love for the people uh, who I know and love to remember me that way, that I really cared about this and that I never gave up and kept working on it. Um, in some ways, you asking me about that and thinking of it as a legacy doesn't actually fit with an aspirational self because I've already been working on this for so long, right? Like I think I might already uh, have some people remember me that way. Right, right. Um, but aspirationally, like when it's, so I tried to think about it in the, in terms of adjectives, like uh -huh. what, what would I like to see myself grow um, uh -huh. as? I would love to become more discerning. Um, both as a business person 
and as an educator. I, I think that if the more I can learn to listen and to discern what's important, the, the better I'm going to get at, at being able to accomplish these goals. Um, I want to continue to be persistent. Persistence is something that uh, is hard. It's harder than you realize. You know, it's just so much easier to think, oh, I'm just going to put this down and rest. And I do rest along the way, but picking it back up is that persistence that I want to continue to nurture. Um, and I think this one's probably very similar to discerning, but being attentive is really one of the things that um, I have to work on because I, I kind of live a lot in my head. And so I have to stop and listen and really pay attention to what other people do and need. Uh, that was my biggest lesson early on as an educator is that people, the students I had, I started out as a English 101 composition teacher at Auburn, Auburn University. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't know what it was like to be those students. You know, I just, my experience with reading and writing was to have loved it, yeah. um, to have uh, gotten good feedback, you know, and I didn't know what it was like to not love it and to not naturally uh, want to engage in it and maybe not be all that good at it and need guidance to get from step one to step two. And so it took me a lot of time to slow down and learn. I have to meet every learner where they are. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's really good. Um, I really like your adjectives, especially the two about being discerning and attentive. I think that that's something that I struggle with too. And I think a lot of it is because I do read so much. Like I can tune out everything and everyone around me when I have something in front of me that I'm reading and I find myself often instead of, um, listening to other people going, Hey, did you know? And, um, I, well, I need that's exactly to what I've just been reading about. So <laughs> here I've created the reality around it and I'm not yeah. necessarily listening to yours. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's really good. Roxanne, thank you so much you, for being with me today. It was so much fun to catch up with you. You guys didn't know this, but we actually talked for like an hour before we even started this interview. And it was, it was so fun to catch up with Roxanne. So thank you. I hope that you guys had as much fun as I did and tune in next week for another edition of Mission Driven Monday. Thank you, Roxanne. Thank you.